sis, can I play your Pokemon Emerald? Please, 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 please. <sighs> Fine. Reluctantly, I handed over my Game Boy and Pokemon Emerald cartridge to my little sister. With a squeal, she turned it on and started playing. I sighed. I don't like her messing with my games, but she didn't have any video games of her own. Plus, she was leveling up my Pokemon for free, and you can't really beat that deal. Come out, come out, wherever you are, Pokemon! I shook my head as my sibling spoke to the inanimate object. I grabbed my DS and popped Diamond in. I flew to Harkholm and decided to randomly make some pop -it poppins for the heck of it. I had plenty of orange berries to spare, so I threw one into the mix. I stirred the dough, careful not to burn it. I pride myself at how well I can make poppins without burning them or overflowing them at all. I stirred with the same perfect grace I always did. Hey sis, I found a green trap inch! I cursed as it stroked the mix too much and caused it to overthrow. <sighs> so much for making perfect poppins. Then my sister's words registered in my head. I dropped my DS and ran over to where she was. <laughs> no way, a green trap inch! I grabbed the Game Boy out of her hands without even giving her a chance to respond. Sure enough, my nine tails was facing a genuine, shiny trap inch. Oh my god, it's a shiny Pokemon! I immediately started freaking out, just as any of you would if you encountered one of these rare pixels. For a moment, I just held the Game Boy in my hands, carefully planning on how I would capture this green sprite. Once I came up with a decision, I put my plan into motion. But I failed. Ugh, oh, stupid trap inch, let me catch you already! I, I can catch it for you! My sister interrupted my yelling at an inanimate object. Clutching the Game Boy, I wondered if I should risk my probably once in a lifetime chance at getting a shiny trap inch. Throwing one more Pokeball at the Pokemon but utterly failing yet again, I handed the game over to my sibling. If you don't catch this, I swear I will kill you. Okay! She seemed unaffected by my poorly thought out threat. In under one minute, she had the thing caught and nicknamed. I caught it! W what? No way! Once again, I snatched the game from her. At the very back of my party was a shiny trap inch named Tommy Boy. Why did you name it Tommy Boy? Because! It's a boy, and I wanted to name it Tommy, so... Tommy boy! I didn't even know what went on in my sister's head, nor did I want to. So instead, I clicked on my new shiny pixel. He had decent stats, with the moves Bite, Sand Attack, Faint Attack, and Sand Tomb. It also had the ability Arena Trap. Done with looking at my new Pokemon, I exited off of him and returned to the overworld. Can I train my Trap Inch now? My sister eagerly asked. In reply, I gave her a serious expression followed by... It's my Pokemon Emerald you caught it on, so it's my Pokemon. Distraught, my sister suddenly agreed. Okay, but can I still train him? In a little bit. I went to battle with him first. I flew to a Pokemon Center, healed my Pokemon, and immediately went back to the desert. I walked into the sand, and after a few steps, I encountered a wild Pokemon, a Sandshrew. I squealed as Tommy Boy sparkled. I never thought I would have my own shiny, but now I did! And I wanted to see what he could do. I clicked on fight and selected the move bite. Tommy boy refuses to attack. My jaw dropped open. What does it mean he refuses to attack? Getting hit with Slash, I cursed my shiny pixel at not obeying my commands. Once, it, once our turn came around again, I ordered Tommy boy to use bite. Again. Tommy boy refuses to attack. Oh, why won't you attack, you stupid trap inch? Uh, I can make an attack. Having been leaning over my shoulder the whole time watching me play, my sister grabbed the Game Boy out of my hands. I was about ready to slap her, but something held me back. I wanted to see if she really could make the stupid pixel work. Without any trace of doubt, she selected the move Bite. Tommy Boy obediently attacked the Sandshrew, leaving me mind blown. <laughs> what the? How did you do that? My sister gave me a stupid grin. He listened to me because I'm his mommy. Sure, whatever. I thought privately to myself. I honestly didn't like Trap Inch and would much rather have a shiny Flygon. But the dang thing only obeyed my sister, who seemed happy to train it. <sighs> Alright, 
You can train Tommy, yes! And with that, my sister began her quest to train and evolve Tommy Boy. I thought she would grow bored of training the Pokemon, but no. For the rest of the day and deep into the night, she worked tirelessly to gain experience for Tommy Boy. I wondered how one could stand training the same Pokemon for so many hours, and I still wonder that. Finally, at around 11 p.m., she had to go to bed. Unwillingly, she saved the game and turned it off, but not before saying goodnight to Tommy Boy. I was still allowed to stay up longer, so as soon as she was in bed, I grabbed my Game Boy. Emerald was already in, so I simply switched the game on. Once the game was loaded, I saw that Tommy Boy was in the front of the party. Of course. But he was already evolved into a Flygon and at level 52. If only my sister would train all of my Pokemon like that. I walked outside of Lily Coast City, which was where she had saved last. I was walking into the grass just outside the city, I ran into a wild mighty Yenna. I lovingly sighed as Tommy Boy came out sparkling. Then my expression became a bit more serious. That blasted pixel better listen to me this time. I clicked on fight. He had new moves. Crunch, Dragon Breath, Sandstorm, and Hyper Beam. I selected Hyper Beam and prayed to God that he would obey. I held my breath. Tommy Boy refuses to attack. Dang it! I yelled at the non-living pixel. Tommy Boy got hit with Bite, which didn't do much damage. I kept cursing at the sprite. Couldn't believe I had a shiny in the palm of my hands and the blasted thing wouldn't listen to me. I selected Dragon Breath, despite knowing he wouldn't obey anyways. Tommy Boy wants his mommy. I stopped hurtling profanity at the screen and gawked at that line of text. I surely hadn't seen any Pokemon do that before. I kind of wanted to laugh. The way that line was written sounded pretty funny, but... I was scared at the same time. Tommy Boy continued to get hit with bite. I fled from the battle. I went back into Lily Coast City, saved, and turned the game off. I went to bed immediately afterwards, mind blown and completely agitated at the same time. I woke up the next morning to find my sister sitting on the edge of my bed, playing Emerald. As soon as I stirred, she immediately turned to me with a puzzled expression. Hey, sis, did you play Emerald last night? Now it was my turn to be confused. Yeah, oh, why? It's my game, I can play it whenever I want. Oh yeah, I, I know that. I was just wondering, did you battle with Tommy Boy? I was starting to get suspicious, although I wasn't sure of what. Why do you care? He doesn't like to battle against Dark-type Pokemon. They scare him. I froze, fear gripping out my soul. How did she know I battled against the Mighty Yenna last night? Tommy Boy told me he fought a Mighty Yenna last night, so I thought you battled with him. No big deal, though. Just don't battle with him again. I was starting to get furious. Finally get a shiny, but he won't obey me. Only my sister can use him, and now she's ordering me around, telling me what I can and can't do with my own game? I prepared a sting and replied that I started to go over the last sentence she had said. Tommy Boy told me. How the heck could she talk to it? But she did know that Tommy Boy battled last night when I was playing. <laughs> she must be playing some big trick on me. I, I decided on that and left the room to get breakfast. I was unsettled while eating though and couldn't stop thinking about Tommy Boy. As soon as I was done, I went back to my room and saw my younger sibling still playing that game. It was question time. So, sis... How did you know I battled a Mighty Anna last night with Tommy Boy? He told me. She seemed undisturbed and contently kept playing the game. How the heck did he tell you? You can't talk to your Pokemon! I... He told me like... She seemed dumbfounded at answering this question. I can't really explain it. He just talks and I guess I sense him talking or something. I, I don't know. She just shrugged and kept playing the game. I was starting to lose my patience, but before I could ask another question, my sister exclaimed, Oh, good boy, Tommy! You showed that sand shoe. 
You make mommy so proud. I felt disgusted at my sister talking to a pixel like that. The realization hit. Last night, Tommy Boy said he wanted his mommy. He never, he meant he wanted my sister. Completely confused, I sat down next to my sister and watched her play. She was in the desert and kept battling the Pokemon there over and over again. Tommy Boy acted like a normal Pokemon and did nothing unusual. Why do you keep playing with the Pokemon in the desert? Because Tommy Boy only likes to battle Pokemon here. She kept on playing, as if everything was normal. After a moment, I thought of another question. Why will he obey you and not me? He doesn't like strangers. I'm not a stranger, and it's my game he's on, so he should listen to me! My sister paused for a moment. After a minute, she responded. <laughs> Tommy Boy says, screw you! She giggled while I gave up and left fuming. My sister did the same thing for many days after that, playing Emerald and battling Pokemon in the desert with Tommy Boy. Once he reached level 100, she still kept training him. Whenever I asked why she kept training him, she just said, Tommy Boy needs his mommy. I was starting to get worried for my little sibling now. Her health was getting bad. I wanted to play some games on my Game Boy too. I tried to talk her out of playing the game, but she refused. No matter how much me or my mom tried, we couldn't get her to stop playing that game. Then one day, I came with a decision. Once my sister got to bed, I took out my Game Boy. I started up Emerald. Once the game loaded, I found myself in Lily Cove City again. Why did she always save here? Whatever the case, I went to the Pokemon Center. I booted up the PC and selected Tommy Boy. Holding my breath, I selected Release. Tommy Boy doesn't want to go. I cursed at the message. I had the sinking feeling that was going to happen. Then I selected on Release again, but to no avail. Again and again I tried, but nothing worked. Listen, you stupid massive pixels. I don't care if you're a shiny or how much my sister wants you, but I'm getting rid of you now. I don't care if I have to restart my whole game just to get you gone. You're hurting my sister's health, and she's hogging up my Game Boy too much. You're leaving? No. I selected release again. And surprisingly, it left. I didn't actually think that would work, but it did. I sighed in relief but a sense of foreboding shrouded around me. What the heck was I going to tell my sister? It was hard for me to get sleep that night. I couldn't stop thinking about Tommy Boy. Once I did finally fall asleep, I didn't get to sleep much for a nightmare woke me up. Although when I woke, I couldn't remember what it was. Starting to wonder if maybe releasing him wasn't the best choice. I woke up to find my sister sitting on the edge of my bed. It looked as if she'd been crying for a while. Once she saw I was up, her face twisted to one of defeat. You got rid of him. I was scared at first, thinking my sister might lash out at me and attack me for releasing her beloved Tommy boy. I shakily nodded. Y yeah, it was for the best. She simply got up glanced at my Game Boy sitting on the desk and walked out of my room. After a few days of mourning, my sister went back to normal. Her health became strong again and in no time she was her crazy, hyper self like usual. I pushed the whole Tommy Boy incident to the back of my mind and continued to live all my life like normal. Until she got her own DS. A few months later, during her birthday, my sibling threw a squealing fit as she opened her present containing her new Nintendo DS. Her excitement was fueled even more when she tore open her next gift, which contained heart gold. As soon as she was done opening her other present, she grabbed her new DS and popped heart gold in. Of course, I had to help her with getting her settings right since it was the first time she used a DS. As soon as that was done though, she began playing her new game immediately. I felt happy for my sister. She finally had her own Pokemon to train and raise. I wouldn't have to worry about her messing up my games anymore, but sadly, she wouldn't train my Pokemon for free. Her game went normal, nothing strange happening. But then she beat the Elite Four and got the National Dex. My sister felt very proud of herself for beating the Elite Four for the first time, and I felt great for her too. 
She started getting into the Safari Zone, though. I never went to the Safari Zone on my Soul Silver, though. It just wasn't my thing. But she loved it and spent a lot of time there. A few days after her obsession with the Safari Zone started, she became very isolated from what was going on around her. She was almost always in her room, playing her game. I was a bit worried about her, but I, I just ignored it. She would stop eventually, but she didn't. One day I went into her room and asked why she was playing her game so much. She surprisingly became very shocked and worried as if she was hiding a secret she didn't want me to find out. She replied saying that she loved the game a lot and wouldn't say any more. She wouldn't clearly answer my other questions, so I just gave up and left. Eventually I became very worried about my sister. She never acted like this and never had before. Except that one time... Realization suddenly struck me like a bolt of lightning. I ran to my computer and opened up the internet at the speed of light. I searched how to get a trap inch in heart gold. An answer came up. The safari zone. I waited until night when my sister was asleep. I snuck into her room and quietly took her DS. I went back into my room and quietly shut the door behind me. Then I jumped on my bed and quickly turned on her DS. The title screen loaded and I pressed continue. She was standing outside the safari zone. I opened the menu and checked her team. There was only one Pokemon in her party. Tommy Boy, the level 100 shiny male Flygon. I immediately went to the Pokemon Center and booted up the PC. I clicked on Tommy Boy and selected release. Tommy Boy doesn't want to go. I don't care what you want. You are going now. I clicked on release again, but was met with the same message. This time though, Tommy Boy was holding an item. Nail. I clicked on it and read the message. This isn't your game. I don't care whose game it is, you are going. I discarded the mail and selected release again. Yet again, I failed at getting rid of the dangerous sprite. It had more mail. I read it. I'm not leaving mommy again. Yes, you are. I whispered threateningly at the screen, cautious at not being too loud. Selecting release still didn't do anything. More mail. It's useless. I sighed. There was only one option left and my sister definitely wasn't going to agree with it. But it had to be done. I booted up my Pokemon Soul Silver and caught a ton of Sentrits. As soon as I had enough, I got on my sister's heart gold and traded all of her Pokemon into my game. In exchange, I gave a bunch of Sentrits. This way, when I restarted her game, she wouldn't lose everything. She would still have all of her Pokemon. Except for one. As soon as all was done, I prepared to turn off the game, but Tommy Boy still had one male left, and read. I selected it. Nothing can get rid of me. You wish. And with that, I turned off the game. I restarted it, and as soon as the menu loaded, I selected new game. The process went as normal. Naming the character and getting the starter, I chose a Chikorita since I had gotten Cyndaquil on my game and she picked Totodile on hers. Once all of that was done, I exited out of New Bark Town and into Route 29. A wild Hoot Hoot appeared, so I threw out my shiny flag on to face it. Wait, wait a sec, what? Why is he still here? I restarted the game! I didn't know what to do at this point. There really was no way I could get rid of Tommy Boy. No, there, there still is a way. I shut off the DS and pulled the Heart Gold game out. I got a pair of scissors and quietly hacked away the game to where it was no longer playable. Then I threw it in the trash can. I got up and went to return the DS to its rightful owner. When I opened my door, I gasped when I saw my little sister standing just outside. For a long moment, my sister just stared at me. It was too dark for me to tell what her expression was. I'm sorry, but I had to get rid of him. Hey, I even transferred all of your Pokemon over to my game so they're all saved. I'll even buy you a new heart gold with my own money. Just please, don't be mad at me. I had to do this for your own sake. I could have been talking to a statue. My excuse did nothing to move my younger sibling. Instead, she continued to stare at me. 
Just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, she yanked the DS out of my hands and walked back to her room, quietly shutting the door behind her. I was horrified and worried. I thought getting rid of Tommy Boy would help my sister get back to normal, but it appeared to be making her worse. After a couple of days, she'll be back to normal like last time. I pretended to believe that and went to bed. Sure enough, after a couple of days, my sister went back to normal. I bought her a new heart gold with my own money and gave her all of her Pokemon back. Every now and then, I would check her game to make sure the shiny Flygon didn't return, which, thankfully, he never did. I also told her to stay away from the desert area in the Safari Zone, which contained trappage. I had to trust her to keep away from it. She did. The next couple of weeks were fine and dandy. No weird stuff happening. My sister eventually got into other games while I kept avidly playing my Pokemon games. I started to get a little too obsessed with Pokemon and somewhere along the line I decided to take the ultimate challenge. To catch every single Pokemon. Being the lazy arse I am though, it took me months for me to fulfill this request. I even obtained a few hack Pokemon since some were just impossible for me to get otherwise. Eventually I collected every single Pokemon and stored them all in my Soul Silver. All except for three. I'd been pushing those three to the side on purpose, horrified that what happened before happened again if I tried to get them. I decided that it would be best just not to get these Pokemon at all and live with having an almost complete Pokedex. But of course, I've given in to temptation. I'm going to catch one right now. I'm going to catch it on my extra copy of Emerald. I have, though. The one I use for messing around, just in case he comes back and messes up my game. I wish myself luck. My sister wrote the story of Tommy Boy and never told me. What was she going to do with this? It's too late to find out now. It's not her fault. He would have found some way to get her eventually. Let me enlighten you and tell you what happened to my damn sister. She was obsessing over the Pokemon games and made the decision to catch every single of the sprites to marvel at by her lonesome. No soul would ever know of her achievement. Although, she pushed the Riches Trio aside knowing what fate lay for her if she were ever to face them. The temptation was too great for her meager will though and she gave in. He told me she tried to protect her holy stash of pixels by searching for one of his kind on an isolated cartridge of hers. One that mattered not. My poor misguided sibling, thinking there was an alternate route for her fate. There was no way for her to avoid her demise. She found him, or more rather, he found her. She tried to run away, to run, to shut the entire system off, but he persisted. He started to pull her into a trance to shower her in the wrong, to feed her the false. And she ate it, and she got caught in his trap, just like a mouse. Gratefully for her sake anyway, she also felt no pain. It was over quick, and now it's as if she was never here to begin with. For me anyways. He says he shall let me go for a few moments, for what reason I do not know why. He wants the next verse to take in a different perspective of mine, to enhance it with a unique flavor. I shall do as my boy wishes, for he will come back to me once more as my alternative. Oh my god, what is going on? What did I just type? What the hell is going on? Everything is so dark. My parents must be asleep because it's one at night. What the heck is this story anyways? Okay, I just finished reading this and it's, it's about Tommy Boy, which I think this is typed by my big sister who died. I don't get the last part though. It doesn't look like she typed that. It seems scary. I don't like this. For some reason, I want to type how I met Tommy Boy for the third time. Wait, I met him a third time? I don't remember meeting him a third time. No, no, I did. That, that's, that's why. He's the reason why my sister died. I remember it. Earlier today, I was looking in my sister's room, even though my mom said not to go in there. I, 
had to find out why she died. When I went in there, her room seemed normal. Too normal. I looked around and found her Game Boy that had emeralds in it and played it. It felt like it had something to do with her death. When the game started up, though, I opened the menu to check her party. He was there. I just stared at the game for a couple of minutes until I finally turned it off and ran into my room. I hid in my bed and cried for a while, and I got the courage to go back into her room. I still didn't know how he killed her. He hadn't killed me before. It just made me think of was his mommy. I forgot she had gotten in his way, though, and he was mad at her, so he probably didn't want to kill her. got back into her room, her Game Boy was still on the floor where I dropped it. I forgot to put it back on the desk. When I picked it up, though, the game was already on, which scared me a lot, but the scariest thing was that it was opened up Tommy Boy stats. All of his attack and defense stuff numbered 666, which made me start to cry again. My mom told me whose number that was. She said that I should never say it. His ability was called Show, and the stuff about it said, True Answer. I didn't know what that meant, but it still scared me. I looked at his moves, which were the most creepiest of all. The first move was I, the next love, then you, and Mommy. They all had 666 PP. And I, I don't know what I did then. I don't remember anything else. The next thing I remember is waking up here at the computer. <laughs> My head hurts. I can't think straight. I'm really scared because I feel like something is in the room with me, but I don't see anything. It's too dark. I don't think it's normally this dark. I want to leave and call for mom and dad, but I can't say anything. For some reason, I feel like they're not even here. Like no one alive is here, but something else is. I'm so scared of crying right now. I, I you have to call 911 or something. He returns to bestow upon me my true sight again. Scanning back over this recent passage I conjured up, I understand now why he wanted me to use my other perspective. Slightly. Whatever the matter. It is time. He is pleased with the tale of his triumph and he wants me to deliver it for him. He wants others to see what he has done, as do I. Goodbye, world, you pathetic excuse of a realm. Being filled to the brim with sins and unholy souls performing daily routines of treachery. <laughs> Mommy will see you in hell.